was of YouTube. Dr. Kemp here, Hammond Doc. Um, in this video, we're going to take a look at the measurement of, of, of capacitors in an actual uh, amplifier. Now I have on my desk here a a Hammond reverb amp. Let me just put this in here. I'll show it to you. It's on, on the desk. Now this is a Hammond AO44 and I plan to rebuild it as needed. Um, it looks like it has already had uh, some, some service done to it right here. But um, I notice, and this, this looks nice, this looks clean. I don't see any leakage on this capacitor. But we'll check it. And then we have two 100 microfarad capacitors back here. And these are leaking. Uh, so, so this this uh, resistor was changed. This is a this is a new resistor here, but the capacitors were not uh, were not changed. So I'm going to be changing those. But right now, the focus of this video is to do some evaluation, um, and let's see what let's see what we get. Now, uh, I'm not going to cut this out. I know that since it's in the board, that to use my flute meter, I would need to cut one end of it. But I want to test it with my ESR meter uh, to see if it is, if it tests good. So I'm going to use my blue ESR meter. And... Clip one in, the positive end here. Clip the negative end. And what, um, this is a hundred microfarad at 25 volt. And so, um, for a hundred microfarad, it says a good a good capacitor will have ESR less than the value shown. So here's a hundred microfarad down here. Should be less than a one. I got a point six four, point six five, which is less than one. So so according to the ESR meter, this is a good capacitor. And since uh, visual inspection of it does not Reveal any capacitor leakage. I'm going to leave that capacitor alone. Okay. Now, regardless of how this capacitor, these capacitors check, I will replace them because uh, because they do have capacitor leakage. I can see the the white film covering these capacitors. So, uh, regardless of how they check, they're coming out of here. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead. We're going since I know I'm going to take it out. Let's go ahead and clip that. And we're going to turn the fluke on. Y'all know I like to turn the fluke on. And set it at uh, for capacitance. And I'm going to hook it up here. This is 100 microfarad. the other side up and this is showing 100 and 
30, 130 microfarads. A 100 microfarad capacitor. All right, going down to 127 now. So what this is telling me, I cut it out of the circuit, 126. Hello, Dr. Janessa, my granddaughter. Yes, you can go ahead and sit down. And Not too many dads, so I can sit by you. You want to sit by me? You feel okay? Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Here, here. Come on, come on. Push the seat out of the way then, and I'll lift you over here. Come around here, baby. Come around that way. Okay. You feeling better now? Mm-hmm. Right. Here you go. You don't want to touch anything up here because we got acid. You feel a little warm. <coughs> All right. We've had weather change here recently, and uh, Dr. Janessa, e. Kemp. Dr. Janessa E. Kemp, um, has a has a fever, and um, we had to pick her up from school early today. She's been running around outside and enjoying herself with this, uh, with the weather being the way it is, up and down, fluctuating. So she had, she wasn't feeling too good. But um, hey, she's down here in the shop, and uh, we're working on this amplifier. So let's get back to it. Ready, Doctor mm -hmm. Doctor Kim? <coughs> Ready? Okay. Let's get back at it. All right. So here we go. How come the amplifier is little? Because it's a it's a special kind of amplifier. It's a reverb amp. Reverb amp. It's not the one twenty twos that we used to you are used to working on. And this particular amp, um, we're looking at the capacitors, which are right here. Um, these things here, and the fluke shows a one twenty six. A good one, this is 100 microfarads, so a good one would be less than 110. It's over 110, it's at 126, so that means this is bad. Now, let's try, let's check it out with the ESR meter and see what we get. Um, regardless of what the ESR meter says, though, it's still coming out. Um, it doesn't matter. Now with the ESR meter, according to my reading, you don't have to cut it out of the circuit. You can leave it in the circuit and check it. Now this at 100, at 100 uh, microfarad, right here, 1 is, is supposed to show under 1 if it's good. It's showing 0.47, so according to the ESR, um, this is a good capacitor. But according to my voltmeter, it's not a good capacitor. According to what I see here, uh, in terms of that corrosion or that, that acid that's on, the, on it, it's a bad capacitor, so it's coming out. And so is the one that's right beside it. It's, it's coming out as well, um, despite what the ESR meter has to say. So, for whatever reason... I'm going to um, have to use this meter more before I pass complete judgment on it. But this is a case where you got a, I got a bad capacitor showing bad on my fluke, but it's showing good on my ESR. And I mean. 100 microfarad, here's the one here, it's showing a 0.48. The, this is saying that the capacitor is good. My fluke says it's bad. I say it's bad. It's leaking. It's coming out. Um, if you want to hit me up, if you have some ideas as to why this thing is showing good, this is a new instrument that I just, that I just purchased. And I'm, I'm trying to um, learn to use it. 
Um, so I don't know why it would show good when this is a bad capacitor. Um, the blue ESR designed by Bob Parker, Anatech Corporation. Um, I'm not going to pass judgment on it, like I said, right now. I'm going to use it some more in the shop and uh, see how valid uh, the instrument is for us, how useful it is for us here. So until um, the next video, this is uh, Hammond Doc and Janessa. Dr. Janessa E. Kemp, who's not feeling very well today, saying to you, peace, peace out. out. Yeah, baby.